you run out of time, you're dead. So decide what you value the most. Cause if you make the wrong choice, it could cost you your head. Spend it wisely. I really hope that this coffee table can hold my weight. <laughs> because I put some on. <laughs> Try to work on your timing. Who was that? Tiny. Hi, Tiny. Hello. Hello. Okay. I really battled with myself on whether or not I was going to come back to the internet because being completely unplugged, I just don't know that I could ever explain like how good it was, but I'm going to uh, do my best to put it into words. Hi, Tiny. Hi. The reality is that most people watching this video have no idea what it's like to be completely detached like that because we're not allowed to. You're obviously somebody who consumes YouTube content. Hi, thanks for being here. Make sure to like and subscribe. TikTok or Instagram or Twitter, which is by the way, the dark web now. When did Twitter become the dark web? Dude, I was gone so long that when I decided to download social media again, I kept looking for Twitter. I was like, where's Twitter? I kept typing it into the app store and it took me so long to figure out that it's called X now. And it makes sense. I feel like it's called X because it's literally X rated. It is the dark web. I've never seen so much and in one place immediately. Like I did not consent to this. I feel like I'm gonna delete that app. But anyways, TV shows like Amazon Prime or Hulu or Netflix. So I didn't just get off social media for about a quarter of this journey, maybe a third of this journey. I wasn't even consuming any type of content on screens. I wasn't watching anything, not TV shows, not movies, nothing. And I really wanna share what that experiment and what this experience was like. But first, <laughs> some quick plugs. I've been gone for a year, so please indulge me. If you're watching this video, that means my new single, Where Did I Go, is out. Dude, ugh. One of the more challenging aspects of this has been not being able to share music and art as I was creating it. So please go stream that song, watch the little visual that I made, and very, very rare for me up till this point, but will not be rare soon. I actually have merch coming out that I'm so stoked about because I'm very excited to announce that it's coming out through my own design company, Look Design Company. This design brand has been years years in the making. I couldn't quite find my style or what I was as a brand. Finally figured it out. It's been a very slow, gradual process. I really wanted to take my time on it and I think that it was worth it. I'm only starting with a couple items because I wanna make sure that everything goes smoothly before I dive head first because I've learned a lot of lessons these past few years. A lot of them about biting off more than you can chew. So I'm taking my time, I'm releasing these slowly and the items that are in the store currently are on pre-order. But I do have a ton of designs and not just like t-shirts and hoodies. I have a lot of items coming out outside of apparel. So you can head to Gabby Hanna official official.com and click shop. Also on gabbyhannahofficial.com, you'll find a link to my Patreon. I'm really, really excited to be back on Patreon. I love Patreon. I used to be obsessed with Patreon. I love the community on Patreon. I love having the more exclusive intimate space to share things with a smaller group of people that I wouldn't want to share too, too publicly. I love brainstorming there. I love getting feedback there. And I actually have more content prepared for Patreon than I have on my main channel. So if you want blogs, exclusive videos, live streams, and also discount codes for Look Design Company and Cameo, then head over to gabbyhannahofficial.com and click the members only page. I am trying Cameo. I've gotten a lot of requests for it. And I realized that so often when I go out and people stop me, they're like, can I get a video for my sister, for my friend? A lot of people just want videos of me saying hello so I figured I would offer that as a service for people who want it so I'm just gonna see how that goes as this video comes out I'm in England speaking at Oxford which what <laughs> is that real <laughs> what world are we in <laughs> that is a sentence I never thought I would say but I'm not gonna be on my phone a lot slash hopefully not really at all while I'm there so those will not be starting up until the second or third week of March but my cameo will be linked on my website so again gabbyhannahofficial.com sign up for text and email so that you'll be alerted when I actually do do cameos and they're gonna be really limited so I'm only gonna be doing like 20 a week probably maybe less so if you want to be notified when I am actually doing new ones go ahead and sign up for text and emails okay I think that's all I got for now after I just rambled for so long but go stream my new music i have a lot more music coming and i would love your support on that my new design company lookdesign.co go cop some shirts patreon is back go become a member and 
trying out Cameo and it's all sitting on a brand new website, gabbyhannaofficial.com. Go sign up for texts and emails. And while we're here, like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, let's get into this. Thank you for indulging me. Okay, so why did I step back for so long? I think that there's some obvious reasons for a lot of you. You might have guessed a few reasons and there's some reasons that were more personal to me, but I would say that the thing that forced me to take the break that I desperately needed since 2018 was honestly just not wanting to be a part of so much drama and stop giving the public so much access to me. I could not get online without seeing a new rumor, a new story. It just wasn't fun to be online anymore. Like online was my safe space since, since I was a kid. This is where I came to make friends because I was too scared in person to talk to people. But all of a sudden my comment section were just filled with so much vitriol that it was just like, why am I even here? I actually tried to take a step back so many times before this big recent break, but I always had some type of contractual obligation that I needed to be there for. It was either a book deal that I was obligated to promote through a certain number of videos, a book tour, an album I'd been working on for years. Actually, no, two albums that I'd been working on for years. A podcast that had ads booked out for literally months that I had to fulfill. So I was bound legally and financially to stay. But besides all that, besides the legal obligation, besides the deals, besides that, I never wanted to feel like I was letting people win. I don't let other people's opinions or actions dictate mine. I didn't ever want to be the image of somebody who couldn't persevere. I didn't want to go down giving anyone the satisfaction feeling like they'd won. But I was losing regardless. My pride was keeping me from my peace for so long. I didn't even have the energy to properly promote my projects anyway. I literally would wake up one day and realize that a song had come out the day before and I didn't even realize it. So I didn't tell anybody about it because I forgot. <laughs> so once my final project came out, which was this time next year, my album that came out over a year ago. I was finally free. I didn't have any more looming projects that were kind of like nagging at me. I felt like I could actually step away without wondering, well, what if I put this out? So I officially released everything I had in the vault and I was just sitting on a clean slate basically. And it was time to figure out like, what's next? What do I wanna do? I've been given so many amazing opportunities but for the last decade, I've been absolutely drowning in work. It's like that cliche of, you know, you work so hard for the American dream and then you work so hard that you never stop to enjoy it. And like I said, it was absolutely incredible. It's a blessing that I would not trade for the world. But I haven't had time to just simply create to create literally since I started YouTube. Everything I did became a grind. I couldn't have a hobby or a passion without finding a way to monetize it because I needed to justify taking the time to do it. I didn't give myself the time or the space to practice a skill before putting it out in the public, releasing it to the world, which again, I'm grateful for all of that because it made me a lot better. I will never shy away from true constructive criticism, even if it's harsh, because I want to know. So yeah, I was just like really super sad and lonely and all always stressed and not having fun like ever, was snapping at people all the time, avoiding a lot of the tough inner work that you have to do in order to grow. I was in this state of arrested development. I got kind of famous and kind of rich at 23 years old, so I never had a reason. From 23 years old, I was being really heavily rewarded for minimal work and frankly, poor behavior. So anyway, that last album comes out and I'm in a place to just finally stop. In my head, maybe forever, maybe not, but I kept failing. I'd get off for a few days, a couple weeks, even a couple months, but I would always buckle and come back. So I told myself, one year, just commit to a year. Give yourself this year to figure out who you are as yourself. Take the option off the table. Love yourself enough to figure out who you are outside of this glass house that you've built yourself. So on Valentine's Day 2023, I decided to love myself. I made my last social media post and I deleted everything. And I was serious about it and it was amazing. So here's how that went. Immediately, I was initially very sad, but in a healing, bittersweet way. It's kind of like breaking up with someone who's toxic. You're glad to be free, but it still really hurts. For a while, that was your whole world. That was all you knew. It was comfortable. It felt safe, even though it wasn't. And now that it's gone, it leaves this big empty space that you don't know how to fill or what to fill it with. I feel like I had no purpose. Like I literally didn't exist. I had nowhere to be. There were days, even weeks at a time where I was literally 
literally physically not seen by anybody. But eventually, and it didn't even take that long, my brain got used to not having all that dopamine all the time, all that constant distraction, and things started to feel like really nice quiet. Time is our most valuable asset, and so is silence. Those are two things that the media has done a very great job at taking away from us, stealing from us. Without all this noise fighting for my attention from every corner of every screen, I started having new thoughts positive ones, kind ones, calm ones, generous and peaceful ones. I started journaling a lot, talking to myself, talking to God, creating without the pressure to release anything, practicing skills before I shared them. It's just like completely, totally clear headed, getting back to the root of art because art is intrinsically worthless. There is no inherent value. It's it's so arbitrary. We as human beings created in God's image, the ultimate creator, we're meant to create, but we're not necessarily meant to profit off of it. My mental health skyrocketed. There was this physical rewiring of my brain. Like my brain knew that this constant dopamine wasn't coming in. So it started like producing its own. <laughs> I stopped having nightmares. I started sleeping better. My diet got better. I was able to use a lot of the time that I was on my phone to stretch and massage myself. My skin cleared up. I started giving my cats a lot more long focused attention that they deserve. I was spending literally hours of the day, almost every day, just being, not doing. I was human being just genuinely rest and i'm so unfathomably grateful that i was able to do that it was truly a gift from god so a few months in i need to like reach out to someone online through a dm so i re-downloaded the apps and i'm like okay now that i've downloaded these apps you know it's been a few months maybe i can consume a little bit of media here and there but dude it just sucked me back in so quickly and something i realized at every time that was the first time it happened but even now when i get sucked back into that spiral into that vortex of social media it's like all my other bad habits instantly rush back in my sleep schedule is bad my diet is bad my skincare is worse so i'm breaking out i'm restless i'm sleepless anxiety and depression come rushing back in. I'm in physical pain. I feel empty and I keep trying to fill that hole with something. And I realized that's a God-shaped hole that I'm trying to fill. I'd been pushing him out for so long because I was choosing this outside world instead. That's what it is to sell your soul, by the way. It's not, you know, this demon approaching you with a contract to sign in blood. Not always, anyway. It's the choices you make. It's what you decide to do for money. If you're not glorifying God, you're glorifying what is not of God. And a lot of times we're not even aware of it because of what we're being constantly told in the media. But when you get off, when you silence all these voices, you start hearing God's voice. You start talking to yourself and then start talking to God. So when I first got off social media and all of the noise stopped, that's when I started really hearing God. And then when I came back on, it was like all of this attention, all of my quiet time, where I'm speaking to God all day, where I'm hearing from God all day, the assurance in the silence was gone. The health, the peace, the happiness, the joy, that was all gone. God never left. I was just ignoring him because I was choosing TikTok. This is actually getting a lot deeper than I was expecting it to. I was honestly just trying to tell you what I've been up to all year, but that's what I've been up to all year. I've been building this intimate, close relationship with God and doing everything I could to understand him. I've been letting him guide my actions. I've been letting him dictate my steps. I've been letting him discipline me and heal me. I learned what it is to actually worship and pray, not to just recite the things that we're told to recite or fulfill the obligations we're told to fulfill. Not this list of rules that man tells us we need to complete in order to get to heaven. That's not what scripture says. What I learned is to actually pray, to talk to and hear from God. And it turns out worship isn't just this chore where God wants you to tell him how awesome he is. It's definitely part of it and he does deserves it. But it's also for you. When you're genuinely in a place of worship, it feels good. That's the secret they don't tell you. Worship feels good. It's like when you tell somebody that loves you that you love them, 
and then that person tells you that they love you too. When you learn to actually tell God that you love him and act in a way that shows that you love him sincerely and fully with your whole mind, heart, body, and soul, God says, I love you too. So anyway, the rest of the year, I'm going in and out of downloading the apps, deleting the apps, downloading them, deleting them. And I did find a lot of value in them. Social media is not evil. Social media is a tool that can be used for good and for evil. It's like I was finally learning this balance and how to curate what I was consuming. We're the sum of the top five people we spend the most time with, right? We are what we eat. We become what we consume. But I learned a lot on social media. I learned a lot about my faith on social media. I was incredibly inspired by a lot of influencers and artists who are creating amazing, interesting, cool, actually cool music that isn't about sex and drugs and money and literally like we're literally listening to on the airwaves and we're so desensitized to sex and it's crazy how desensitized we are to sex and and vanity and greed and pride like it's literally so evil and that's one major thing i would say the major thing that stepping away from social media and being alone without any outside influence led to it was an awakening when you're consuming all this stuff you are sleeping and when you get back to who you are as a human being you wake up and it's a little bit scary because you're waking up from a literal nightmare but anyway when i did come back online in those small spurts it was actually really fruitful it inspired me a lot it changed my sound and music the internet is a really powerful resource as long as you're not abusing it like any drug social media is a drug it's not a substance but you can be addicted to it the same way that gambling is not a substance but you can be addicted to it the same way that sex is not a substance but you can be addicted to it you're addicted to the mental that's happening you're addicted to the dopamine you're addicted to the rush the adrenaline that's happening i wholeheartedly believe that in the not so distant future social media addiction is going to come to the forefront of culture it's going to be a real diagnosis it's going to require real rehabilitation it's harming people physically mentally socially it's putting relationships at risk it's putting jobs at risk and so many people are so absolutely hooked and living for the hit dying for the hit and it was substantially harder for me to quit than literal drugs for me and i'm sure for so many others it's a sickness and the bigger you get the worse it gets you keep chasing that high of having that one viral moment you keep seeking that love and approval and validation of others each time you have a viral moment you're reinforcing that behavior and when it doesn't come when you don't get that hit start spiraling and start acting in ways that are outside of your character. It's something you tell yourself is fine. You can control it. You can stop it whenever. But is it fine? Can you control it? Can you stop whenever? Could you delete your apps right now and be totally okay with it? Listen, if it don't apply, let it fly. But I know a lot of people are relating, especially digital creators. And no, it's not lost on me. But as a digital creator, as somebody who creates content, who creates music, who creates art, who's creating clothing, who wants you to engage with that, who's relying on ears and eyeballs, how ironic it is for me to tell people they should consume less social media. But that's how important I think it is. Because if I have this valuable information, this amazing life-changing experience and I don't share it, that's beyond gatekeeping. That is literally evil. And I love you and I do not hate you. So if something I'm saying is resonating with you and you feel like you need to delete your apps, God bless you. Godspeed. Go to GabbyHannaOfficial.com and sign up for texts and emails to be alerted when I put out new clothes or new music. <laughs> so let me tell you just how bad my addiction was. After I moved home, I redownloaded some apps to help me kind of, you know, soothe the anxiety. You know, just like a drink to take the edge off. And immediately, I'm metaphorically passed out in a metaphorical ditch. No metaphorical idea where my metaphorical keys and wallet are. So I downloaded this app called App Block, which not sponsored, but highly recommended. It is so awesome. Basically, you can lock yourself out of your apps and depending on the level of restriction that you choose you're you're out and you cannot get back in it is a very great tool that will make you very happy but this is how sick i am i block my apps immediately i downloaded a dating app i 
went to app block i filled out all the information i blocked the apps i closed app block and then i went to the app store and downloaded a dating app that's how serious it was just because i needed something to swipe on i needed the validation of strangers so i was on there for a week exactly i went on two of the worst dates i've ever been on and then i deleted the app and added it to the block list you're welcome for the story time video link down below <laughs> oh my gosh dude all this to say Man, I really was thriving without social media. I was having a real good time. I felt really nice. But here's why I came back. Because I'm a creator. I'm an artist. I'm an author. I'm a musician. I'm a songwriter. I'm a designer. I want to share things. That is who God made me to be. And he also didn't give me all of this perseverance and tenacity and ambition and drive to just throw it away. He didn't give me all of this influence to throw it away. So I talked to a lot of friends about it. I talked to myself about it and I prayed a lot about it. And ultimately I have to be online to do the things that I know God is calling me to do. And I want to do those things. Like, you know, sometimes in life we have to do things we're not super amped about or even things that scare us. No one really likes to wake up and go to work every day. And this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day. And the fact that this is what it is for me to wake up and go to work every day is incredible. This is what God called me to do. And he gave me a whole year to figure out how to do it the right way. And coming back, I'm actually not worried about the hate or criticism or backlash or whatever it is. I think I've proven to myself at this point that I can withstand just about anything. People have said the worst and done the worst to me as far as online stuff goes. And have attacked me from every angle and I'm still here. You cannot stop me. The only one that can stop me is God if he so chooses and he's on my team. My hesitancy was actually the fear that I wouldn't be strong enough to handle the praise because I've made the mistake before of letting the praise of people make me. And so I let the hate of people break me. So now as I'm coming back into this, I'm performing for an audience of one, but anyone else is welcome to stay for the show. And I hope you do. <laughs> Cause you never know how much you got till you 